This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Brad Rates Random Things. Today I'm taking a look at the 30 devices that I reviewed over the course of 2020 and I wanted to boil it down to what are my top five favorite things that I used this year. So what I have here on my screen is a document. These are the 30, actually it's 31 things I've had the chance to review this year. And I'm gonna be crossing these off my list one by one until we're left with five. Makes sense? I think so, so let's get to it. All right, so the first thing on my list is the Chuai Hi 9 Plus. That was an Android tablet. Uh, I wasn't that impressed. It was really cheap, which is why I reviewed it. I wanted to see if I could find like the cheapest Android tablet that you could draw on. So I'm going to move that from one column to the other one. Um, uh, the pen just was too wobbly. The tablet was too slow. Even though it was cheap, I don't think it was fun to draw on and I don't recommend it. So good experiment to start off the year, not making it on the list. The next one is the Wacom One. Now this was Wacom's budget price 13 inch pen display. They took off some of the things that make the Wacom Pro or the Wacom Cintiq Pro so expensive uh, in order to get the price down. And, and this one's a tough one because you get that Wacom name brand, you get that Wacom pen, but I still think what they've done is they've made a budget price tablet like a Huion or an XP pen, but it still costs more than those, and yet you're not getting things like a laminated display like you're getting on the Huions and the XP pens. So at the end of the day, I wasn't that impressed with the screen. Um, it was fine, you know, if you wanted to get one, but I'm taking it off the list and I'm putting it on the other side here. Next up, we have the XP Pen Artist 22R. This was a big 22 inch drawing display. Uh, I liked it, it was fine, but it wasn't anything special. So again, this one, it's going off the list. We're gonna add it to the other side. All right, so next up, we have the Huion HS611. It was fine, it's a good product, but again, it wasn't breaking any new ground. I think the only real thing that was new about it was the ability to attach it to an Android phone. That, and you could get it in hot pink, but I don't think that was enough to make my list. So, man, everything's getting kicked off my list early here. Okay, next we have the Huion Canvas 13. It's, it's basically a revision of the previous year's Canvas 13 Pro. It's good, it was a good price, it was nothing revolutionary. It's probably not gonna make it to my top five devices, but for now, I'm gonna keep it on here because I think the value that you get for that product, because it's around $250, uh, what, you, what you get for that $250 is pretty good. So for now, we'll leave it on the list. Next up, we have the 2020 iPad Pro. Um, this is the best of the best iPads. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty cool device. It didn't really change that much between the 2018 version and the 2020 version. It added a new camera module that had a LiDAR sensor along the back. They did add more RAM, but everything else was the same. You know, it's still really, really good, but I don't know if it deserves to be on this list. I'm gonna leave it there for now, but I, I think it's gonna get kicked off later. And I'll tell you why in a second. All right, Moto G Stylus. This was a phone that came with a stylus. And it was fairly inexpensive. I want to say it was like $350, $400 for that phone. So it was a pretty good value. It was a good phone. The problem was is that it was a dumb stylus. I think in my review, I got better results when I was drawing with a carrot. Yeah, so that, that means that if you get better results drawing with a carrot, you get kicked off my top five list. So let's put you over there. The Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. This was Samsung's budget-friendly Galaxy Tab. This is definitely staying on my list. I wouldn't be surprised if this makes it to my top five um, or, or, or even number one. Was it the greatest Android tablet released this year? No, it was not. What it was, was a slightly scaled down version of the Galaxy Tab S6. So they took out some of the things that you don't absolutely need. It brought the price way, way down. Last time I saw it was selling for like $250. It brought that price way down. They packed in the pen, so you don't pay extra for the pen like you do on a Surface or an iPad. So for that $250, you get everything you need. You gotta pay a couple bucks for apps. But still, you get everything you need right there. And the things they cut weren't that important, but the things they kept were super important. And what Samsung has done with Android over the last year, uh, they've really been like working with software manufacturers to bring their products over to Android because they realize that pros don't really want to use Android if there's not software there. So they got Clip Studio on there. The price, 
for what they give you, plus all of the other things Samsung has been doing on the side to make Android in general better, it deserves a place on this list. Next up, we have the Surface Go 2. Did not like, remove. It was just too too slow and it was kind of expensive. It was like, it's $500. It's another $100 for the keyboard case. It's another $100 for the pen. Just forget it. Don't get a Surface Go. And it was too slow. You have to get the faster processor, which is another 100, 200 bucks. Forget it. You're getting $1,000 and you're not getting that good of a device. There's a lot more on this list, but before I get to that, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform. Professional websites, online stores, portfolios. It's even easy to claim your own domain and URL. Create a custom site that matches your style, bring your ideas to life. I took it for a spin. I built my portfolio with it. And as a web designer back in the day, it would have taken me a week or two to do what I was able to do in an evening using Squarespace. If you're showing off your work to potential clients or trying to land a full-time job, those templates look really professional. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Domain. Canvas Studio 22. What Huion did is they took their product, which is a big 22 inch monitor, and they put a computer in it. So it was an all in one computer. It wasn't bad. Uh, it's kind of cool to see them going that route and trying different things. But also, I don't I don't think it was on my list of great products. You know, it was just an it was an OK computer uh, with an OK display. Surface Book 3. Now, I had never used a Surface Book before I tried this, and I loved using it. I really enjoyed it, um, but I don't think it, it really deserves to be on the list. The main reason is that Surface Pen, It's I didn't really enjoy drawing with it that much because the Surface Pen, I've talked a lot, I talked a lot about them in these videos, and it's just, they're not... They're not great for artists. They're good for note takers and stuff like that, but there's too much wobble jitter to the line. So going to take that off the list. Next, we got the XP Pen Artist 24 Pro. Now, what was a big deal about this and the product I'm going to talk about in a couple sections is that this is the first budget display we see gaining resolution. For years, these things have been 1080p. Uh, now they're 1440, I think. It's a 2K resolution. So it it's like 50% like wider and taller, basically. But this higher resolution on these bigger screens makes a huge difference. Um, is that worth being one of my best devices of the year? I'm not sure. Um, looking at what's on there now, probably not. So I'm, I'm going to take it off. I reserve the right to change my mind later. So let's paste that over there. Samsung Galaxy Book Flex. This is a really good year for Samsung. This is a really good year for Samsung. Uh, people call me like an Apple fanboy, but I think this year I may have become a Samsung fanboy. Um, this is, uh, I think I'd say this is the best Windows laptop I have used for art yet. First of all, I love the design. It's it's a sleek ultrabook type thing. It's got this blue cover to it. It's got these brushed metal edges. So visually, it just looks stunning. It is very light. It's got some pretty good battery life. I was getting like three, four hours of drawing time out of it, which is which is decent, you know, if you're using Photoshop or something like that. It uses Wacom's EMR pen. It comes tucked in, but you can use any Wacom EMR pen on it, which I did. So overall, I really like the Galaxy Book Flex. I thought I thought it was a good value for what it is, and I have been looking for a really great uh, Windows drawing experience for an all-in-one, and, and every single one has like one little problem here or there. This one didn't. And so I think for now, that's going to stay on the list. Hui on Canvas Pro 24, 24 Pro, whatever. Uh, I'm going to take you off. So this... XP Pen made their 24 Pro, which has that 2K resolution. Huion wanted to do the same thing, and that's exactly what they did. That's what the Canvas 24 Pro is. It's the same thing they've been making for years, except this time they've they've gone to a higher resolution. It was great to see them doing that. It's a $900 product, which is pretty expensive, but it's so much nicer than the 1080p screens we've had. Still, I'm taking that off the list. Again, that and XP Pen, man, it, it, they're neck and neck. They're almost the same identical product. 
Uh, and if one can't make it on here, I don't think the other's gonna make it on here either. The HP Envy X360. Now this was a budget priced laptop that was a 360 kind of folded around. The problem here, it was cheaper than the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex, but, but the problem it had was the pen wasn't very good. I believe it was using uh, Microsoft's uh, pen technology. Um, Microsoft Pen Protocol. And so unfortunately, that's just not very much fun to draw with. That's what you see on a lot of the Surface products as well. So uh, good try, had an AMD processor. That review got a lot of views because I think people were curious about the AMD processor. Um, it's fine, you know, it ran great, uh, but I, I'm not that interested in benchmarking AMD stuff. I'm more interested in the user experience, especially when it comes to drawing and illustration. Now we have the 27 inch iMac. It's an iMac. It's fine, but it's an iMac. It doesn't make the list. Hawaii MatePad Pro. This is an Android tablet. And if you read all the stories about it, it said, this thing is the iPad killer. This is the best Android tablet. But since Huawei, I think I pronounced the name wrong a minute ago, Huawei is banned in the United States or U.S. companies are not allowed to do business with Huawei. So what this means is that it doesn't get access to the Google Play Store and a lot of other app stores. So you can't really download anything for it. You can't download Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or a lot of the drawing apps that I wanted to use. So the narrative around this was Huawei made the greatest tablet in the world, but you can't use it because it doesn't have the Play Store. I got it to test anyway. And, uh, the pen sucked <laughs> and I didn't think the device was all that good. So I, it's a cool narrative. It makes for a cool story, but at the end of the day, it just wasn't a, I, I didn't think it was that great of an Android tablet. So even, even if I could have loaded up the apps I wanted to on it, it was still just a meh, mediocre tablet for the price. Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. That is my phone. That is what I have right here. I use it every day. I really like it. Um, however, I, I think it's almost identical to last year's Galaxy Note. It just has a much gianter camera bump and it's heavier and it drains the battery faster. Ha technically has a better screen as well. The screen is beautiful. It's a great phone, but I don't think it necessarily makes my device of the year category. I don't think it's doing anything big enough to really surprise me or make me any happier than I was before. An XP Pen Innovator 16. All right, so this is the XP Pen's latest 16 inch display. It is really, really good. The only problem with it is that they, they've increased the quality to the point where the price is starting to get kind of high. It's around $600 which isn't that expensive. It's still a couple hundred dollars less than the 16 inch Wacom, like $400 less. However, I, I think there's better values out there. Really nice product. I think Huion 16 inch is like $200 less. And when we're talking about that price differential, like what are you getting with the Innovator 16 for that extra $200? You're getting better build quality. And that's about it. So unfortunately, even though it's really nice, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it off the list there. Okay, now now we get to the the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. Beautiful. This this is the best Android tablet out there. First of all, every year they've made them about like 10 inches, you know, a little 10 inches screen. This time they've gone up to almost 12 inches. That makes such a huge difference. It feels so premium just holding this thing in your hands. Everything about this tablet is great. The screen is beautiful. Still to this day, it is the best looking screen I've seen on any device Ever. It is it is beautiful. It is great. I, I love what they've done. I mentioned this before with the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. Samsung's been doing great things working with software makers to help bring their apps to Android, Android tablets specifically. And again, you, you combine all of these little things that Samsung is doing. And I think the Tab S7 Plus is the last three or four years of work that Samsung has done kind of culminating to just an amazing amazing product and the first product that I looked at and used and thought I could see this replacing my iPad and I have used it a lot uh, probably like 50 50 with my iPad I've used it a lot more since the review which says a lot because usually I go back to the iPad after a week or two of a review but here I'm still using it so this definitely stays on the list so you're staying Galaxy Tab S7 plus all right we got the Huion canvas 22 plus um, meh, that was just another version of Huion's thing. It was fine. It was good to draw on, 
but it wasn't that great. Then we get the Surface Duo. Now this is Microsoft's like two screen phone. I really liked this. When I was using it, I, I just loved, the, I, I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. It wasn't fun to draw on though, because again, we're, we're using the Surface Pen. It was really buggy for me, you know, just like it didn't always know when you were turning and sometimes things got stuck. Uh, it's, it was very much felt like it was still in beta. However, um, it was still really cool. Not cool enough to make this list, however, so it goes over there. Next, we have the iPad 8th generation. This was basically a spec bump to the base level iPad. This, the 7th generation last year, made my list. And the reason it made my list is because it was such a fantastic value. This is still a great value. I mean, once you add in the price of the pencil to the price of the iPad, we're talking about a $400... $30 device. I think the value you get for your $430 is very, very high. Um, however, it's just a spec bump. So it's not really that exciting to me. So I'm going to throw it over there. Acer Concept D3 Easel. This is a cool laptop that had a bendable screen. I'm going to talk about it more in a minute when I get to its bigger brother. But for now, the pen stunk. So I'm taking you off. It was not fun to draw on. They made this beautiful computer at a good price. Blah, pen was bad. The iPad Air 4, um, you probably know all about the iPad Air. This, it basically took the iPad Pro's design, brought it to the iPad Air line. So this one, I'm going to take the iPad Pro off. That's number two. We're taking you off iPad Pro because that was a small update. I like that the iPad Air 4 has the A14 processor. I like that they've upgraded the RAM to, I think, four gigabytes now, which is really, really nice, which makes it much nicer to draw on. I think right now, if, you, if you're if you like, I want to buy an iPad right now, unless you're doing video production or something like that, I think the Air 4 is the way to go. And I also like the colors. So for that, it stays on this list. XP Pen Deco 01 version 2. That was That's just basically an update to XP Pen's thing. It was fine. MacBook Pro 13. This was Apple's first M1 silicon product. It was great. I loved it. What I really, really want is a 16-inch version of this. Since you can't, it's not in and of itself an art tool, I'm going to take it off the list. I think if I was purely a tech reviewer and not a tech reviewer for creative folks, that might be number one on my list. But it's, you know, it's not really an art tool. It's just a computer. Remarkable 2. Ooh, um, so I've just been using it the last couple days. In fact, I'm still in the process of making the review, which will be up by the time you see this video. I was just blown away by how good that pen felt. Do I think anyone here should buy it? No, I don't. But I was still blown away. So I'm going to keep it on the list for now. Hui on Canvas 12, that is an update. Let's get rid of that. Boom, boom. Acer Concept D7 Easel. So I mentioned the Concept D3 Easel and how it had a bad pen, but it had this really cool display and they were taking chances. They nailed it with the Concept D7 Easel because they used Wacom's pen. Loved it. Problem is, it's like a $2,500 computer. And it's it's like, oh, you got it right, but it's way too expensive. I, I You know, unless you're doing like 3D work or something like that, it's not, it's total overkill for most artists and illustrators. Look at this. So this is pretty good. I've got this list down to six. So I've got the Huion Canvas 13. I've got the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. I got the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex. I got the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. I got the iPad Air 4 and I got the Remarkable 2. So now what I want to do is I want to rank these in order. First of all, Huion Canvas 13 is not my device of the year. The only reason I put it on here is because I think it's a really good value for what it is. But out of everything on this list, did it blow me away? No, it was it was an incremental upgrade. So for now, we're going to move that off my list. I thought this was going to be a lot harder to get it down to five. So here is my five. These are in no particular order. So there we go. Five things right there. Uh, what order do they come in? This isn't, this actually is pretty close. So first of all, I think my device of the year is definitely the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. I just, I really felt like they knocked that out of the park. Next up is the iPad Air 4, just because I, I'm so glad to see Apple bringing the Apple Pencil to 
down to the lower range tablets. They did raise the price of the Air a little bit to kind of accommodate some of that. Also, the Apple Pencil 2 is more expensive than the 1. But still, I think this is a good value. It's nice to see the quality of the top end iPads starting to trickle down to the lower end iPads. So how about the rest? Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, it's such a value. Uh, you know, if you've never drawn before and you want to do digital art, that's not a bad place to start. Um, that's the thing for right now, it's $250. Uh, I don't know if it's going to go back up. Maybe it'll go down because it's an older product now. It's like seven, eight months old. But wow, you know, what can you get for $250 that you can draw on that has a screen, let alone something that you could also play games on and watch Netflix on and do social media? It's a full-blown computer, right? That feels good there. Same thing with the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex and the Remarkable 2. So I think that list looks good to me. I like it. So there we go. That is my list. Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. I feel really good about that one. iPad Air 4, Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex, and lastly, the Remarkable 2. Tell me down below in the comments what is on your list. Thank you for watching all year and all my videos. Thank you guys, and I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks.